I got money on my mind. I'm just trying to get some dough. I ain't picking up my lot unless it's money on the phone. I have one last question. Uh, just talking about owning real estate, you said own it through businesses and only through LLCs. Can you explain that and why that is, why they, why you choose to do it that way? Well, if you if you really want to build uh, wealth, like one, of, you know, you have to be comfortable with debt, right? But the debt is a slippery slope. Things happen in life. You might, you know, things may go wrong. So I try to tell people, don't be scared of debt. You know, um, you just have to do it in a way that's safe, right? And the analogy that I give is that uh, if you, if, if let's say you're 17, 18 years old or whatever, whatever the legal age to drive in the state, but on your first day of, of you getting a license, you get into a car accident. Now, the, the thing is, do you uh, not get behind the wheel because you got into a car accident? No, you, you, you learn from it. And it's the same thing with debt. Many people get into debt trouble personally, right? And then they spend the rest of 10, 20 years trying to get out of debt, fix their credit, and then they're scared of debt. So I don't want any more debt. No, the way to do it is set up these legal entities, accumulate debt under the legal entities. And then once you do that, take risk, take risk. And that's how you build wealth. Everything won't work out, but you can walk away from it and, and, and the thing is, something will work out. If you have the business idea and you're able to leverage technology, you're, and that's what we could do this year. Like I guarantee you in the next 10 years, sometime in the next 10 years, you're about to see a teenage billionaire. I guarantee it. Most deaf. You know? And the, the reason why is because we're at a point right now where the iterations of companies are going so quick but in our communities, we're not taking the risk. If you don't take the risk, you don't get the payoff, right? The reason why I know that we're gonna see a teenage billionaire is because you got lots and lots of teenagers that are creating companies. And these VCs are funding these companies. So sooner or later, something is gonna hit. And, when, and we're talking about short time where, windows where somebody can create a business, create a company, and in less than two or three years, that company is valued at two, three, four hundred million dollars. So it's not a leap to say somebody's gonna come out the box and, and, and do double that and be a billionaire. Industry disrupted. And I, I actually saw a story a few weeks ago. There's this uh, one, one kid, she's like 10 years old. She got a, a coding job. She coded something, and I think they paid her like 10 mil. It's huh? like, damn, yeah. yeah, yeah. 10 years old, 10 mil, bro. I mean, look, it's, it's happening right now. There's, there's a, a coding app, it's called Grasshopper, right? They show you how to, they start teaching kids how to code at three, four, five years old. This is facts, right? Look at where we're going. And, and it's so important that we're talking about this on the Black Wealth Renaissance podcast is because this is the key to wealth. What he just said is the, also part of the key to wealth. Teaching our children to take a part of that, that technology movement that's happening right now. Because mm -hmm. if you have a company and you don't have technology, you're gonna be fighting companies that, that leverage technology to the max. Yep. So if you have a company, think about a startup that, uh, think about a, a adding a technical founder, right? If you know somebody that codes, if you know somebody that knows how to write uh, language and you can put them and incorporate them into your business, that's how you, you, you can go out there and get hundreds of millions of dollars through the VCs if you put a plan together and, and execute. That's really what Money App is, really, if you think about it. It's literally a fintech bank. We've been able to leverage technology. When you come and get a loan through us, it's through the technology, right? We're able to do that. So that's how we can, you know, we can invest a couple million dollars. And that's what we did. We invested a couple million dollars into our own business, our own bank, right? linked to, with the charter and then from that point on you know the, the when we got well, over 40,000 people that we've helped 40,000 clients gives us a high valuation right so that's that's forced appreciation that's wealth creation right there we're going to turn around and give that wealth to the black community that's really our goal you know but any business can do that any business can do the same thing but we have to be thinking like that. We have to be thinking technology. We have to be thinking, how do I own the coding, right? How do I write? How do I transfer from, go from ideation, right? The idea stage that's in your mind 
and into the real world. It's through coding, mm. through engineering, right? Software development, things like that. We, we need to be more cognizant of that. And, and, and if you're a young person right now uh, in high school, uh, looking and struggling for a career path, if you learn how to code, that's how you get a six-figure job out the gate yep. automatically doing that, doing coding. If you, you know, it used to be, you know, I, I started uh, studying accounting um, in, in high school, right? Because I'm like, yeah, I'll get a job. Maybe I can be an accountant and, you know, somebody, some business always needs accountants, right? So I was like, let me do that, be the CPA. If I had to do it all over again, I would code. I would write my, I would learn how to read, uh, read and write code. You know, so I can implement my own ideas, whatever ideas. And we all have ideas. I guarantee you every person that's listening right now has a million, multi-million dollar idea in their head that if they got with the right coder, the right um, computer science individual can bring that out and mm -hmm. share it with the world. And that's crazy because David and I were actually talking about that. Was it yesterday? Coding? Uh, maybe. Uh, we were talking about it. We was like, damn, bro. If I would have known what I know now, I definitely would try learning that. But I'm just like, I'm too far gone now. I don't have time for it. But if I would have known in high school, like just really the big advantages, and even if I'd have just been exposed to some of the languages of coding, because once I got to school, I, I knew about Java and things like that, but I just wasn't interested in it at that time. But if I'm, I'm with you, if I would have known what I know now, I definitely would have been somewhere coding because, uh, what two, three podcasts ago, we had another, uh, yeah, young soon. brother. He, he's a, he's a, a software engineer and he created a iMessage game and it just teaches multiplication, division, everything like that. But it ended up taking off because he had the foresight to say, okay, I was exposed to coding. Let me really, really focus on this because I can see where it's going. Now he was able to go from one year. He created the app. Now he's, he like said the top iMessage game, yeah. one of the top 10 iMessage games now. So yeah, definitely a lot of opportunities in that, man. And then uh, you talking about the six figure job as well. I think we mentioned that on that episode as well. Y'all, these companies do not care about these degrees when it comes to this, this skill anymore. This skill is more valuable than a degree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, which you know, begs the question. It's like a lot of people are getting hired with, with you know, with, uh, without a college degree. So the landscape is changing, and I think when we get to the other side of COVID, we're going to see that. You know, we're going to see even more of that. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, key point, key point. So, young people, I hope, I hope you really uh, take heed and see it. And with anything, if you can see the trend, you can meet the trend and take advantage of the trend. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Because technology is not going anywhere. It's no, not going what? anywhere. It's going to be with back. us. As, as much as you want to, um, some people, it's, it's a show on Netflix. Actually, the first time a documentary was number one on Netflix, it's a, it's a documentary called The Social Dilemma. That and was good, bro. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> good. Good documentary, but check it out. But, you know, it, 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 it breaks it down, right? It talks about some of the, the dark side of social media. But the fact is, it's not going anywhere. It's gonna be here. So once first step is understanding the awareness of how it's influencing, how technology is influencing our day-to-day -day lives. But then you have to ask the question, what am I gonna do about it, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have to ask the question, if I don't uh, impact change, it's gonna affect me and it's gonna, it's gonna make the decisions for me. Mm -hmm. You know, and you, you don't wanna be, you know, we, as, as black people, we know about slavery. We can't have people, we can't give our power up freely. You know, yeah. and I think that education, awareness, and, and saying, look, I'm going to use this technology as a force for good is going is, is really going to be significant. You know, we have to make those decisions. Hey, the gospel. Y'all definitely, definitely take heed to those words. If you're young, even if you're older, if you have that time, just really just take a dive into that. Uh, there's programs, even right now, I just saw that uh, Amazon yesterday, uh, they're they're cloud, cloud servicing, they're offering free schooling, and then after you're done and get your certification, they're offering a job. So like, it's, it's opportunities out there. Same thing with Google. I know we talked about it last podcast, but Google's doing the same thing. They're offering you training, they're offering you to teach you how to work their system, 
but then they're offering you a job after you're done. And you don't have to necessarily keep those skills at that job. Once you learn and understand certain mm-hmm. languages, the, 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 um, uh, God damn it. The, uh, why the hell I lost my damn word? I don't know. The opportunities, the opportunities <laughs> are unlimited. I'm about to say, I don't know what you about to say. <laughs> <laughs> But you, hey, you telling the truth though. The opportunities are unlimited. Like even the last, I think the last episode we did when we dropped the Hypernova episode, I did a little bit more research. Like, and they use the bots to yeah, buy or uh, like to help them get a jump start with the shoes and stuff. And, and most of the bots are coding. Yeah, like all coding. of that's coding. Like you can learn. Uh, I think it's Python, language Python, mm-hmm. and that's one of the ones that they use to make bots. But it's like that's even just for a sneakerhead. You know what I'm saying? Now you have the advantage over all these other sneakerheads that are just, you know, waiting on these releases to come as they go. But now, because you know how to code, you're that much better. I love it. And uh, I heard you also talk about the VC firms. Um, I wanted to get into that because I saw that you also are a co-founder of VC firm. Um, is Money Ab the VC firm or is that a whole separate entity? We, we got $10 million that we're looking to invest in people with ideas. Um, that's, that's really what it is. Now, $10 million is not a lot of money um, mm-hmm. in, term, in, that, in that space and in that world. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's a new uh, process, but we basically are looking for companies that can scale rapidly. We're, we're looking to just create more entrepreneurs, more people that have great ideas and, and just be a resource to them. That's really our, our, our goal behind that fund. Um, and, you know, we've invested uh, in a startup and already uh, in January, and we've also invested in a soft drink, like a, a, a person that was putting out a beverage that, um, that actually went on to ha- put the beverage in Walmart and, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, build, b- build a significant audience. So um, it's not all technology, but let's face it, if you're, looking to build wealth rapidly, you, you know, you have to incorporate technology in mm-hmm. something that you do. Mm-hmm. So I am really looking for people, particularly minorities in the technology space that need help, that are looking for investment capital. You know, we have that fund, uh, that money set aside for you guys. And then, um, you know, that, that's a key thing of what, what we're looking to do. What are, what are some of those criteria? So if a person is ready, they know, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to step to Donahue. I'm, I'm ready to try to get this thing going. Right. So number one starts with the business plan, right? So we don't, we don't expect you to have a fully baked out uh, uh, product or anything like that in the market, but definitely be able to articulate your vision. Um, we look for one of the definitions of a startup is growth, right? So you have to be in a business that has growth, you know, um, if I can quantify it for you, um, maybe not today, but at least five years down the road, your business should be able to be making a hundred million dollars a year. You know, that's, that's really, that's growth. You know, um, you might have zero sales right now, but those are the type of companies that we're looking to invest in a company that could one day, if you could make a hundred million dollars a year, uh, through your business and you can map that out, that, that is, that, that's how you get money from us. You know, that's one way. Those are the companies that are going to be worth a billion dollars down the road, right? That billion dollar valuation for those of you guys in the tech space, that's called a unicorn, right? When a company is valued at a billion dollars, they call that a unicorn. And what we are looking for is we're looking for the next unicorn, you know, particularly because we know that there's talent in the black community, um, there's 40 million black families here, right? And what we do is even at, at Money Ave, we're just looking for 10,000 people. Like our, our business model, 10,000 people is going to allow us to create a half a billion dollars, mm-hmm. a half a billion dollars, right? So if you, maybe that ecosystem of technology, if we can take that money and put it and invest it in your startup or your you know, your opportunity, you mentioned the, the guy that created the chat box. I mean, look, right now, I know how big the sneaker industry is. If there was a sneaker head that came up with his own chat bot that find, um, to find sneakers at a, at a significantly discounted price, you know, he'll, he'll, he, that, built, that business 
would be something that, you know, would be definitely viable because that's a, 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 a something that there's lots of people are searching for and lots of people are always into sneakers. I'm into sneakers, you know, right now I got the, I got the Tim's on though. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I usually, I usually got a nice pair of kicks on too. So, but um, yeah, so I hope I answered the question. Um, you know, we're looking for founders that, you know, have that technology incorporated into what they're doing. We're looking for people that are, that are, that, to take this business serious and we're looking to invest in them. That's, that's the key.